football than Ireland. Captain Laura Miller is a key figure in midfield, even though she doesn't turn 20 until December. Only three of this team play outside of their home country. As for England, well, Frank Kirby is back. The Chelsea star looks set to feature in a slightly deeper role than she does for her club. One of only two changes from the victory on Friday night. Nikita Paris, the other new starter after coming off the bench last time out. Leah Williamson, still captain, and there's a 50th cap for Alex Greenwood as the players take the knee. Eager players wearing black armbands tonight. Field, I think, that's been put together today with Fran Kirby, Ella Toon with Leah Williamson sat behind them. So they're just going to build on the last game. Well, for Luxembourg, there's Daniel Santos, their manager. Only ever won two games in their history. And the women's team established in 2006. This is their biggest, highest ranked opponent in their entire history. Here's Millie Bright, centre back pairing with Greenwood. Moving it on. Now down, that's right hand side, and they're queuing up in the middle. One of them's Toon, Stokes, and goalkeeper holds. First attempt already. We can already see England out wide. A wonderful ball in behind to Nikita Paris. The numbers England had in the box, including Demi Stokes. Surprising nobody was on the end to finish that. Serena Vigman. Happy with the finishing from her side on Friday. Eight would not be enough. As Bright puts her foot in. And all the way back to Mary Earps, who probably had about three touches in the game on Friday. She'll be delighted to be back in the England fold, but not likely to be tested too much tonight. Certainly we will see Millie Bright and Alex Greenwood in possession of the ball a lot of the time. You can see that Luxembourg already sat in a low block in a 4-4-2. Greenwood was in so much time on the ball in the game against North Macedonia. Hent expect her to carry the ball often tonight and whether this defence can stop her is another question. The whole back four booked against Northern Ireland. Oh, what we've already seen with a bright international career with Lauren Hemp. It's not just her ability to go 1v1, but the quality of her decision-making in the final third demonstrates why she's going to be one of the top players in the world. So Greenwood over this set-piece. They'll be close by. Struggled from set pieces in Belfast. Did Luxembourg? Will they struggle here? Greenwood floats it in. Goalkeeper gets something on it to put it behind for a corner. But in that zone of uncertainty there. Well, certainly, Schleimer didn't look comfortable with that. Alex Greenwood got a wonderful left foot from dead ball situations. I'm surprised she's not going over to take the corner. It's Kirby with the outswinger. Back in the England fold. Plays it in towards White at the near post. Well, able to string too many passes together. In the game against Northern Ireland, which was played at the same time as England's match on Friday. It's a great start from England. Great tempo, great intensity in the way they're moving the ball. You can see there's such a good shape in midfield with both Fran Kirby and Ella Toon. Either side of Leah Williamson, and great support to Ellen White. It's Daly, one of the standout players for England against North Macedonia. Greenwood able to just pick that pass to that side, just kept in play on that side as well. Just a foot in that midfield, but Kirby can pick it up. <laughs> Gabriela de Lemos, who has Crespo on the back, is her other family name. Is at left back today. She came off the bench against Northern Ireland, can play in midfield. Here's Stokes.
Harris out on this left hand side. Placed Beth Mead for this one. Both club mates now. Daly. Williamson getting on the ball to make something happen. Laid off by White. Kirby. Nibbling challenges in there. Williamson wants that ball. Says play towards White. Williamson again. Toon. England have worked it well. Stokes hangs it in there. Is an England head on the end of it? There might be, not quite. Scramble defence for Santos. To a goalkeeper, just. But good patient play from England. And one thing I think we will see as a feature of this team is the maximum width that Serena likes to apply. Although it looks like Hemp starts out on the left and Paris on the right. I've seen them change position a couple of times. You've got to expect a lot of play of England playing inside to then go out and get crosses into the box. Some space down this side now. Towards Kirby, Williamson. To ride a few challenges here, England. Some desperate lunges in this game, no doubt. That's what Williamson does so well. Steps in. I think she makes a fabulous midfielder. No Arsenal fans have enjoyed her at the back, but very keen to see her in midfield. Daly in towards White. So many bodies back. Luxembourg already, but already under pressure. Hemp. Drop of the shoulder, low ball into the near post, and almost diverted in that time by White. Goalkeeper got enough on it. The teenager, Schlimme, in goal for Luxembourg, just keeping England out. That's what I'm talking about with Lauren Hemp. It's just brilliant 1v1 play, but the quality of the pass into the box to her teammate, Ellen White. Precision perfect. They almost played themselves into trouble there. It's going to be a very busy evening. I mean, it's a brilliant ball. Great run from Ellen White, getting across her player at the front post. And Fran Kirby, Nikita Paris, unable to follow through. Daly playing it in towards that penalty area where White is. The ball just ran out of play. You touched on Leah Williamson there. Obviously, she started her career in midfield, then went into defence. Now she's in midfield for England, and you said that's where she should be? You know, I'm sure Arsenal fans will disagree, but I personally wanted to see her play in this position for England, at the very least. What she brings both sides of the ball, I think, will aid to England's midfield play. But with Ella Toon and Fran Kirby in front, Leah's positioning, her awareness, her game intelligence, I think will give Fran and Ella that platform to go forward. Plenty of platforms this evening. And applying the pressure quickly. Not able to put too many passes together. Their host tonight. Hemp. Hosting inside. Williamson. Kirby. Sliding challenge in there, but Daly can keep it going. And Toon's waiting in the back post. And guided back in. Stokes. Strong challenge. Williamson spotted the pass. That break to Kirby. England can start again. What most people won't realise that even this season alone, that Leah Williamson is second in through passes in the WSL this season, but also top for passes into the final third. She really has an eye for a pass. And that's from centre back. That's from centre back. And you can't always play as a single pivot in there. There might be times that England would play with two, and with Kira Walsh miss missing, another wonderful player. Certainly gives England a lot more depth. Paris, on that channel, lay it back, just to get a cross in. Working hard in defence. Luxembourg side. But England looking to keep the tempo up. And of course, is England side featuring Fran Kirby, your own player, Emma. Yes, of course. I'm so delighted to see Fran 
playing for England. I know all about her wonderful qualities. And as I've mentioned before, if she can be kept healthy through this season, I'm pretty certain she'll be a pivotal player for England going into the European Championships. And how are you hoping for England to look after her such during these breaks? Oh, yeah, listen, I've, I've already made that clear. I think her recovery is critical. And if, if they get those things right, then Fran will perform every game. Paris, pot shot, comfortable enough for the teenage goalkeeper. 17 years of age. What I do think is great is Ella Toon gets to play alongside her. I think Ella Toon is a brilliant talent. Seeing her progress under Casey and this year under Mark Skinner. She's a player, I think, that will go on and perform really well for both club and country. Trying to work an angle here for him. Flashes it in. Wonderful finish. Brilliant finish by England's main markswoman. Ellen White is getting closer to the all time record. Well, it's just telepathic play once again from Hemp and White. White's timing to arrive into the right spaces, knowing what Lauren Hemp's abilities are in 1v1. It's just superb and as you mentioned her record for England is simply outstanding goal number 42 for Ellen White the record is 46 she wouldn't back against her getting it tonight it's just lovely forward play the way she gets across the front of the defender I talked about the importance of playing a forward pass inside make sure Luxembourg get very narrow before they play the ball out wide and Lauren Hemp as we've seen time and time again in 1v1 positions she's simply outstanding here's Hemp again driving forward lots of options for the Man City flyer it will be a corner to England and they were particularly vulnerable against corners when they face Northern Ireland Luxembourg and what we're seeing is how clear the structure is under Serena Wiegmann really wants good wide play especially on this left hand side Bailey Bright in that train looking for her first England goal might find her as well Williamson There's too much time on the ball and that should be comfortable enough for the goalkeeper just had to push it wide in the end Bolvin in front of her an awkward shot from Toon difficult for a goalkeeper there's a lot of bodies in front of her and Toon showing her confidence from already a bright start this season Greenwood sends a flatter delivery in headed over and Williamson special day for her on Friday to captain her country for the first time at senior level Kirby not involved in the squad on Friday of that management and game time at the moment England not allowing Luxembourg to even string a couple of passes together it's hard work for them out there there's another of their teenagers Marcus Abreu 17 well there's one other thing that we don't mention about Serena is her Dutch team in which she only lost nine out of 61 games was a team that had the most intense pressing game on average they only allowed a team a maximum of nine passes before they regained the ball and you can see with the shape of England so far that they're quick to get around the ball and England in behind here can Paris keep this in not quite just run away from her but England's record with the Netherlands was outstanding she only lost if you want to say we're not calling a penalty shootout a defeat as such she only lost two competitive matches a qualifier against Norway and the World Cup final against the United States it's not bad going it's not even though I thought they disappointed by their standards at the Olympics and I think one of the things that was most disappointing is defensively I thought they allowed too many chances for the for the opposition but she's got a fantastic record she's a winner she's experienced you can see in the way just with two games the structure that she's implementing with this england team daily just running away
away from her. Inside to Kirby, could get that under control just. But it's quickly back with England, doesn't take too long. Two trying to work it forward, quick to press when they lose the ball. Get that ball back again. But look how high the centre-backs are. That's Alex Greenwood, left-sided centre-back, stepping into midfield to win the ball in the counter-press. Bright going long, that's not the best header, back into the box. White. Now Williamson. All the time in the world to pick her passes. Right out to Daly. Paris. Greenwood. Plenty of players in this England team. Bright. Has time to shoot if she wants. Instead clips it in. It's a decent ball as well. Mike dropped to him. Hacked away. Santos can't keep that under control. Will keep coming. Daly. Luxembourg wanted any respite, they've got a player who could play up front at right back England. Williamson. Kirby prods it on, and another goal for England, a second for Ellen White. The freedom of the penalty area, and she wasn't going to miss. Do you know what? That was a brilliant team goal. It, it had everything. It had patience. It shifted the ball from one side to the other. It was composure from Millie Bright in the deepest spaces. You got Williamson in the heart of the midfield running the show already. And just brilliant combination to end with from Frank Kirby to Ellen White, who once again, one touch finish. It's just a lovely touch from Fran. And that's not an easy finish, but she pivots, puts the ball in the bottom corner. To keep the tally on this 43 goals now for Anna White. What a servant she's been for the national team. It's Dos Santos. No way out at the moment. Look, there's no denying that England should win this game and should win the game comfortably but I've been so impressed at the start quick one and two one and two touch play in and around the penalty box with Williamson involved again and Fran Kirby as I know all too well has that intelligence to find the players in the key areas a great finish from Ellen White Serena Vingman will be pleased England have knocked off two goals in their 20 minutes Kirby. To her Chelsea teammate Millie Bright. This is Alex Greenwood. To her club teammate. Clear the ball here, the pressure is applied by Toon. Well, they can't clear the ball because England have so many bodies around the ball really making it dif difficult for Lux and touch from Paris as well Kirby suppose England's only danger at the moment is getting in each other's way well, you can see Amos are in the box but again good play by England quick play to get behind the Luxembourg back four and the key to Paris doing what she does best getting in behind but there wasn't a lot of space not even at the front post because Luxembourg are dropping so deep here for England if they can win it and win it fairly and that's exactly what's happened Paris they're queuing up in the middle Toon and she can't hit the target with her head again what she can't do is hit the target but but a much better decision from Nikita Paris it was the cutback space and as long as Ella Toon keeps arriving in these positions she's still 22 I really do think she is a huge talent an England squad with a fair amount of young talent in it. Serena Bigman looks to settle on her side, leading up to the European Championships on home soil. Summer. Here's Bright. To Daly. It's right run for Kirby. Kramer across to clear. 
is the only option for Luxembourg. You can see the plan, England just working to shift the ball until they can find a central pass. Often with Ellen White just dropping a little short and then getting it out to the wide players before the ball's delivered into the box. Drops out to Kirby, to link up with Toon. Kirby. Look how low Luxembourg are as a team. Both Millie Bright and Alex Greenwood almost circulating the ball like centre midfielders. Stokes. Can't get out either. But just to repeat, this is Luxembourg's biggest ever game. It's the first time they've been in the main group stage of qualification. They are the outsiders in this group, but the home fans enjoying themselves in the Stade de Luxembourg, which is the national stadium. It was just under 10,000. Only opened in the summer. Daly spots the gap. Kirby. Toon. Toon again. Kirby. She wriggle out of the challenge. It breaks again to White Squared. A block in there, must be, no. Not to be for Kirby. I don't know how that didn't go in. There's two or three stabs at scoring for England. Again, good central play. Really, really enjoying watching this Fran Kirby and Ella Toon link up. You can see they naturally want to find each other and Ellen White causing such a problem, overloading in that area. Whenever the ball gets into the box, she's always in the right place. There's a platform for Luxembourg here, a free kick, which is safe to say Nikita Paris disagreed with. Amos Crespo playing that forward, that looked like a handball. England just want to get on with it. Referee for this one, Alexander Chesin from Slovenia. Ebony Salmon there, and another player you know quite well. Beth England. Yeah, hopefully Beth gets some minutes as well today to build on the two goals she scored the other night. But of course I'm going to say that, no disrespect <laughs> to Ebony Salmon. Absolutely. She's not the only player you've got in this squad, of course. Bright. It's a release. Challenge across should be a corner to England. Well, I think it's an exciting time for England in the build-up to the Euros. They've got a experienced manager I think's really put the right structure into England and I think what she has brought to the team you can see already there's a confidence in the way they're playing the way they're passing the ball she's demanding high standards Kirby's corner just evaded the head of Williamson Greenwood to trouble, but they know they'll win this ball back quickly. Toon. There's all the room in the world for Daly here to have a shot. She to pick out somebody in the middle. What a bad ball. All depended in the end. I don't know what other options you had because Luxembourg are dropping so deep inside their six yard box. And sometimes these games get really difficult when so many bodies just congest areas. Those two early goals, though. No suggestion that they won't win this game. I suppose that's what makes these particular matches so tricky because they're sort of lose losing away for England because the goals will never be enough and it's not that test that they need to face the best in the world. No, it's not, but you can only you know deal with the opposition that's been presented. I think there is a global problem at this minute in terms of the disparity and the gap between the top teams and the rest, and I think that's something both FIFA and UEFA need to look at. Two lovely touch. Couldn't get it forward to Kirby. It's a strong challenge in there at midfield. It'd be interesting, of course, Leah Williams has been so high up the pitch in this game because she's been able to. Doesn't have to sit right back. Oh, but what, what luxury there is for Serena that Leah could play centre back, centre midfield. I think she could play full back. She's got that much quality. Here's Bright. 
to Kirby. Allowed to turn. Here's Stokes. Now Hemp. One thought in her mind to be positive. And that's Hemp. Up another corner. One thing's for certain, you know you're going to get an end product from Lauren Hemp once she goes 1v1. Not just putting crosses into the right areas or forcing corners. Constantly keeps the opponent under pressure. That's six already in this game. I've never seen Fran Kirby take so many corners in my life. I didn't know she could. Here is Kirby's corner. It's flicked on and Bright's in there and Paris is in there. And there's number three. And it won't be the last the way England have started. And I think after that one, Fran Kirby will be knocking on my door to take the corners. Again, a brilliant floated out swinging ball just beyond the front post. Poorly defended, I might add. But Nikita does what she needs to. Second ball when it drops to her feet. And no more than England deserve. They, they've been really bright. No worries already. Mayor Santos, what about Kirby's corner? Like I said, I think she's going to drive me mad when she comes back, but we've got so many corner takers. We'll have to see. Well, Nikita Paris's 15th goal for her country, 55 for her as well. They'll all be looking for more. Paris again. Interesting dynamic, of course, is the fact that her and Meader's club teammates as well, both playing in similar positions. It's going to be an interesting battle. Stokes. Dispossessed, but straight away Hemp is there. Again, Toon opening her body up. That's the bodies to get past. Miller in that midfield for Luxembourg, the teenage captain. Able to keep it for long, though. In goes Williamson to win it back, high up the pitch, and that spells danger for Luxembourg. And here's Toon, can't beat the goalkeeper. It opened up for her. Such a shame, because I really enjoyed the intense pressing from England. And again, Leah Williamson, she reads it so well, steps in, intercepts, and then counter-attacks for a team. And Frank Kirby showing her selflessness to square the ball to Ella Toon. Really exciting midfield for England. They're going for these outswinging corners. With Greenwood now, on the opposite side. In from Greenwood, another decent delivery. And uh, Kirby almost scoring with her head. Believe it or not, that's where she is very good. Actually from set pieces. Not taking them then, no? She'll be disappointed with that. Well, at the moment, we've played just under half an hour. And the hosts, 3-0 down. Williamson helped on by White. And Hemp is at the back post. Lauren Hemp, who's never scored for England. We thought she had, well, she had a fair few chances against North Macedonia. She'll expect some tonight. Wow, I didn't realise that, but goals will come for this player and just simple play from England again, whenever they regain the ball, forward pass to the central players, then out wide, followed by a cross. Both Paris and Hemp heavily involved. For those who've watched Lauren Hemp know she won't stay without a goal for England for long. It's captain. It's Greenwood's cross. And it just skims the head of White, who could have had a hat trick in the first half hour. Williamson, so composed already. Kirby, he's in challenges. Some of the players trying to just disrupt England's play. Well, what you've got to have in this type of game is the type of, in of midfield that England have. Players that can pull their central players apart. And look how many times Ellen White's coming short to get on the ball. And that is opening up spaces for Toon and Kirby. Hemp eases into that penalty area. 
will be a throw to Luxembourg. We know it's limited opposition, of course, but you're liking what you're seeing from England. I'm just looking at what a coach is doing and the way she's setting the team up with the style of play, the intention, the intensity, the execution. Within two games, you can see a clear plan from her. I think it's just important that England maintain that. And as they know, this is a game they're expected to win. They're expected to win heavily. But it's all about building momentum. So when they come up against better opponents, the confidence has been built. Certainly doing that here. Here's Stokes. And they can try things as well. Sense. Yeah, sometimes you try the wrong things because all of a sudden you're in false position. Mainly because England have finished off some of their chances earlier than they did It's North Macedonia. Here's Bright into White. Kirby, lovely feet. Just couldn't quite find the finish. Finding so much room in that penalty area. Well, it's just been Bright again from England there. Confidence to punch the ball in centrally has really impressed me. And Fran, as we know, in these positions, she has the ability to do what she just did. There's White again coming short. Fran chops the ball, looks for the top corner. Hemp, Williamson down the left-hand side. Stokes. Spread the play, open the pitch up, stretch this young side. Strong opposition. It's bright. Greenwood. It's an into white. And this is what I'm referring to. Look how high Millie Bright and Greenwood are against next level opposition. England are playing with double width with Daly and Paris out wide. So look at the distances between. Millie Bright and, and Rachel Daly in the turnover at the next level, like now, England would be massively exposed. So sometimes these games, they develop bad habits. That sounds a free kick here. That is the case in points. So Greenwood, there's no wall. in, just try and find Paris ball out of play there. In terms of Frank Kirby, of course, where would you like to see her playing for England? What's her best position? Where she is right now, uh, I think the fact that they're playing a one and a two in midfield with Toon and Kirby in front of Williamson, they can do that in this type of game. And against good opposition. That's the, that's the question, Mark. You know, like I said, Kira Wall, she's, she's out the squad at the minute. She's another top player to come into the midfield. I think you need the options depending on the opponents are but in this group England have also have Latvia Northern Ireland and Austria Austria expected to be the toughest opposition they've started with two big victories as well 6-0 winners over North, North Macedonia Austrians Williamson almost doesn't mind Getting close to her. She just runs away from Hemp again. Part of a Manchester City side who had a sh had a shock defeat to Tottenham. The second WSL game of the season. It's really opened that league up. Yeah, but they're a top team. These things happen. It's early season. And try and pass out from the back. ball across the box as well We're away with that one Luxembourg Greenwood upright Daly right with all the time in the world now Kirby can turn two in the middle waiting for the cross Paris able to Position every time. It's a corner. 
And as much as Millie Bright's got time on the ball, punching balls in between bodies like that, I think so. she's worked really, really hard on. She's picked the right passes this evening at the right time. Kirby's corner. Is he going to drop nicely? It is! Oh, that's a finish. And England finishing well at the moment. And Alex Greenwood on a 50th count, finding the nets for number four. That's just where you want to lift foot up. Really is great. Second phase play from Alex Greenwood. Brilliant left foot. Fell really nicely for her. She got over the ball. Made it impossible for the goalkeeper. Again, this out swinging ball, it's hung up towards the front post. Good position for a second phase player to be, knowing that any clearances in this area, clean strike. When England's finishing better, it's what Serena Vigman demanded after the game. It's what she was looking for from these particular games. She knows the bigger tests will come. Kent beats one. And the latest corner for Luxembo to defend. And of course, in these sort of situations, on sides like Luxembourg, there's a fitness factor as well. I mean, there's no denying there's a golf in class, but over the last couple of years, we've seen England struggle to break down this type of opponent, and that's what's been impressive. The amount of central area forward passes I've seen, great movement. It's flicked on by Kirby, is bright. Toon, first time ball in. It's the worst idea in the world. If you were to compare this, though, to the performance against North Macedonia, happy with what you've seen so far? Yeah, I think so. I think there's been uh, a learning and a better understanding of what Serena wants from them. I'm impressed with the counter-pressing from England, the number of bodies they've got round the ball, and most importantly, decision-making, when to be patient, when to penetrate quickly. And I think all of that is being led by their captain, Leah Williamson. I think he's at the heart of everything. It's England. Well, they have drawn the odd game in qualifying. 20 years since they last lost in any qualifying competition. They are expected to win every game in this qualification group, but as I've always alluded to, it's how England do that that they get judged on. Harris drifting inside. Toon just away from him. As you said before, Emma, it's exciting to see the young players coming through in the English game, getting their opportunity in the national team early. Yeah, but that's where I think our league are developing players. You know, they're playing high-level games week in, week out. Some of the best players in the world are playing in our league. And I think as a result of that, players like Lauren Hemp, Ella Toon, yes, they've come through the youth system, but they're being exposed to so much on a weekly basis that's going to aid their development in what is the biggest year for England, England's national team in the lead up to the championship. Bright sliding it through. Bright looking for Paris. Away by Lemos Crespo. Williamson. Out it goes to him. Beats one. deal with that low block but of course Lauren Hemp will be used to that I thought in her mind to progress that ball forward Bright it back again to that Kirby now Daly Kirby again England dominating possession as expected as well is Greenwood Bright, Williamson, Bright once more, 
Oh, five shirts in the penalty area now. Paris. And happy to be patient. No problem with that. Daly. That's when they do engage into a tackle, they might even open up some space behind. Like I said, they can be patient because the opponent doesn't have a counter-attacking threat. So the distances between players at times, if they faced a better opponent, England would be exposed. Greenwood. Calmly done. In the middle of the park, of course. I don't want you to, to repeat yourself straight away, but of course. We know she won't be able to do that against Ben. Well, Rock, look how high she is. I mean, but it's the right position to be in this game. Oh, lovely flick on by him. That was paid off as well. Williamson gets a little disjointed. That was Sue England as well, but to be trying to progress upfield. They want a free kick. But that's what Williamson does so well. She can do it both sides. She can put brilliant passes into the final third, plus recover defensively when the opponent breaks. I mean, look how quickly she gets across. Well, Laura Miller, a little shake of the head from her. She's the Luxembourg captain, one of the three players who play outside of Luxembourg, but two of those play in the Belgian league and another in the lower tiers of German football. to see the England players as well. Here's Greenwood. Into White. With a one challenge. And Miller seems in shape now. Gives it straight to Stokes. Hemp's in a good position to the left. Here is Hemp. A strong challenge in. She looks towards the referee, wasn't pleased with that one. I'm surprised that wasn't a corner. But Luxembourg somehow have to narrow off and make it more difficult for England to find passes from the deepest spaces straight up to Ellen White. It's been far too easy for England to do that. And from there, that's given England the platform to play. I'd like to see that challenge for England to try and break a team down when they don't have the central area. Stokes picks it up and goes forward. Three Stokes going on. She was lying up a wonder goal there. Why not? It's Greenwood to Bright. Williamson. Now Hemp. Still Lauren Hemp, still, oh, it's not to be this time. Will that first goal come tonight? Oh, gutted for her not to get her first goal. It was a mazy run, something we've all seen over the last couple of years. I think once she gets on the half turn and in those positions, she's devastating. Well, so far, so good for England. Goals that they did on Friday night in the first half. They were a bit more incisive in this game. Two goals for Ellen White, one for Nikita Paris, and one for Alex Greenwood on cap 50. Half time, Luxembourg nil, England four. There is that she's so good in transition moments. She reads the play well, it intercepts the ball and sets the team off into attack. Okay, let's get back into it then. Funnel up for England at the moment. Your commentary team for the second half, Emma Hayes and Seb Hutchinson. So underway in the second half. And England with this four-goal lead and looking for more straight away at the start of the period. Big challenge across on that side by the hard-working De Santos. And if you want to know, the record defeat for Luxembourg is 12-0 in 2014 against Poland. And England's biggest ever win, 13-0 against Hungary in October 2005. You're expecting it was Luxembourg to tire even more in this game. 
Well, first of all, I think it's hard to be critical of anything England did in the first half. I think every player performed the job that was asked of them. I think now at 4-0, after a 15-minute break, is can they maintain both the intensity and the intention? And if they can't, then it will be about introducing the right substitutes at the right time to maintain that, because Serena is a coach of the highest standards and she will demand that of her team. And I think that's one of the reasons why England will become a stronger force under her management. Well, Luxembourg have brought on Naomi Rafs, who's a centre-back. They brought her on for a midfielder, Kochan. So what they did against Northern Ireland, actually, they went with five at the back early in the second half, and they've done it earlier here, but England trying to find a way through with Kirby, and now Daly to Paris. Who wants a shot? There's a deflection on that one, and already England finding the net at the start of the second half. A deflected shot from Greenwoods, whether she gets it or not. She won't mind too much, because England have another. Oh, certainly more patient play again from England. The time and space that Alex Greenwood had as a centre-back on the edge of the box is unacceptable. Yes, deflected, but Luxembourg so deep. Virtually felt like all 11 players were inside their penalty box. Hopefully we'll get a confirmation on whether it was on target or not the shot from Greenwood. Struck it pretty well. As it stands, we'll give her the goal. It's Daly. To Kirby. Alex Greenwood. I have a hat trick. I mean, that's mental to think about <laughs> centre back <laughs> on a hat trick. No disrespect to the opponent. Here's Bright. Out to Daly. Now Paris, still Paris, challenge going in, perhaps a little issue. We flagged Emma is the fact that Paris and Daly perhaps operating the same areas at the moment. Well, they want to play with double width, England. So Paris, I think, positioned to play high and wide, but often coming inside of the fullback and then Daly going nice and wide. I think it's worked on the left-hand side better than it has on the right. Kirby playing that corner short. All read by Dos Santos on that side. Of course, it's the Manchester City combination on the left. Let's have a look at this effort again. But again, there's no player within five, six yards of Alex Greenwood, and she's only 25 yards outside of the goal. Here's Bright. Big touch, invited trouble. And here's a break on. For Luxembourg, England flooding bodies back though quickly. No chance to advance at all. No, but that's what I referred to in the first half. You know, Rachel Daly's probably one of the highest players. And it's Frank Kirby from the midfield position that has to cover for Millie Bright. And in these games, you cheat positions because you have so much of the ball. But I'm pretty certain when England play next level opponent, those distances will be much closer. I suppose they would try those sort of passes in that situation. They feel like they're pretty comfortable at the moment and they can take their time and sometimes they can lead you to trouble. No, but that's why Serena wants a bigger test for England. This is not a test for England, this is just a chance for her to see in training camp and in games more about a new set of players. Greenwood looking for Paris. A little touch of the defender there, so that will be a corner to England, who must be to double figures now for corners. Nikita Paris, record signing for Arsenal. Was the WSL's top scorer until she left for Lyon in that time. Liana Miedemar took that on. There you go, 12 corners for England. Attacking that one as England going for Greenwood on the corner that time instead of Kirby. But how many times have England been able to get that first ball into the second six-yard box unopposed? 
clearly identified that space. Luxembourg heavily loaded inside their six-yard box. Look how deep they are now. But as I mentioned, look how much more compact. They can't play the central pass anymore, England. Space somewhere else. Here's Stokes. Well, England will have to go around. They'll have to be patient in their lateral play. Bright. The pass. Quite on point. Two. Not getting any easier for Luxembourg. It's the options England have on the bench. Players hungry for goals. Toon short with a pass. Well, this is where I think Toon has to learn, especially when the, the gaps between the opponent's back four and midfield four is a lot shorter. Very clever pocket player, but usually excels when those lines defensively are a lot longer and she can turn and run. But linking up with Hemp, getting the right decisions, the right quality of pass, I think she hasn't done as well tonight as she did the other night. Well, at the moment, five goals for England. Eight against North Macedonia. Two of those eight goals for England were own goals. So England actually only one away, really, from what they did on Friday as far as their players finishing. And if I think might sound a little irrelevant, that's what Serena Hickman said after the game. Players only scored six of the goals. Support to her, support to us. Here's Bright. Now Greenwood. Light with a flick on. And by my Albert. Well, even though that central pass for, for White was still on, certainly Luxembourg playing much closer together. They're making it much more difficult for England to link once that pass has made White's feet. There's two players on a hat-trick. There's two players who've never scored for England in the penalty area. But Luxembourg get going. It's too much on that. There's no way they to beat Daly or Stokes for pace in that sort of position. Here is a problem. Guess what? It's a Manchester City player as well. Alex Greenwood down at the moment. Having rotten luck in that department. That is not a sight Manchester City will want to see. And just in case you didn't know, their injury list at the moment as far as just England players are concerned. Morgan, Bronze, Rover, Barnsley, Walsh. Chloe Kelly, Steph Horton, all injured at the moment. Those players have had a lot of football. I'm, I'm very much about player welfare. And I think that those players have had to play a lot of football without a lot of recovery and have made it very public. It needs to be addressed. There's a European Championship coming up next summer. And if we want England to do well, have to be mindful of that. I know Serena's spoken out about it too. We need England to do well next summer. Manchester City not able to play any friendlies pre-season and then losing to Real Madrid in the Champions League qualification stage, losing to Tottenham in the second WSL game of the season. Not the best start for them and England will entering the changes early here. They're going for three in a row, Beth Meads, Beth England. Those two combined really well on Friday. To the Moy as well. Promising centre half from Arsenal. Well, three good subs, I think three top players in good form. They build on their confident performances from the other night. I do think the intensity has dropped off. But Serena equally mindful of the number of games these players have got domestically as well. Bright, looking for Daly, cut out again by Dos Santos. He's worked very hard down that side, cut out a lot of balls, in fact. 
Williamson inside to Bright. Feeds it in towards White. Not to handle. And this is what I was talking about earlier. Now England have to solve another problem because they can't go directly into White. You see the much more turnover, much more transition as a result of it. Now they can they stretch England here. They haven't had a touch in the penalty area just yet. It's Marquez Abreu, a teenager, 17-year-old, but the move is lost. And this is where England will want to operate and take advantage. That's a loose pass, though. The Lemos Crespo steps away from a few challenges, but when the game's broken like this, we feel it only suits one side. But two warnings already, this second half of something we identified in the first half with high attacking fullbacks, that if there is a central area turnover, England are so susceptible to the counter. And I can't think that that's what Serena will want against the top teams. It's Bright, out to Daly. Point again. Garcia, this is Paris, Williamson out to Stokes, easing away from one challenge, maybe looking to link up with White, here's Bright, went for the shot, little deflection, just wide. What I can't understand is why didn't Luxembourg defend like this in the first half, it's not like it's a secret way Wigman's teams play making it harder for England, hence the, I think, the changes. Yeah, three of them. The Linus is and Ellen White denied a hat-trick again by a substitution. But she's not, not done by any means. Closing in on 100 caps, closing in on that goal-scoring record. She was one away tonight for moving second on the all-time list. And Beth England, who got a couple on Friday, is on the field probably looking for at least a couple in the remaining half an hour. Likewise, Beth Mead, with her excellent start to the season for Arsenal. Oh, Beth Mead in particular, joint first in total XG and expected assists in the WSL. Smile on the face of Lauren Hibb, no goal for her again. But boy, will be an aerial presence. Young leader, but really bright prospect. Beth England, I think this game is perfectly suited to her. Gonna take it short, trying to work it, drop of the shoulder, fine run as well. But it come back towards an England player in the six yard box, not quite, but they'll be off and running there. England. Two waiting for the cross, and Paris is at the back post. People just getting enough on that. Maybe a new entry on the field, giving Luxembourg something else to think about. An improved defensive performance in this second half. Is Stokes out wide again. Stokes, a digger cross out. Does dig a cross out. B trying to find some room. Likewise, Toon. Not too many touches in the penalty area. Well, you look at the space both Toon and Kirby had in the first half, and compared to the second half, not been involved in the same level because the same space is not there. You see Frank Kirby having to run a little wider. That. Just confirmation there that Alex Green Greenwood, the latest to be denied a hat trick. So let's talk about the three subs that England have brought on. You've already touched on Ruben Moy as well, but what about Beth England in terms of her England place? Well, one thing I know is that she positions herself inside the width of that goal better than almost anyone in England, and I think playing for England she'd have learned a lot from Ellen White and being around you know her prolific career and Beth has worked so hard this pre-season and the beginning of the season I think to really kick her game on getting left out of the GB squad at the Olympics 
crowd getting excited when the home side have the ball for however brief it is. Well, that's what Beth will give you to work back for the team. Here's Toon collecting that from Kirby. Toon, they moved it on nicely, and then an own goal. A familiar story in England games. Another own goal to add to the two against North Macedonia. And Jessica Bershight putting the ball into her own net. But I think had it not been an own goal, would Beth England have got a toe on that? And that's the positioning I'm talking about for her. And Beth Mead, as we've seen, a brilliant start to the season. I think she could be a key player for England if she builds on this form. And this is what she does so well, wraps her right foot on the ball. Like I said, if it's not an open body to pack that defence, shift Dos Santos higher up the pitch. Kirby. Now Daly. Paris down the line. Still Paris. It's tight, but she's done well. Daly. And clearance there that I thought for a split second was going to end up in the net again. Well, you feel that every time England put the ball in and around the six-yard box, it's going to go in. Luxembourg swinging legs. Still plenty of time for England to add to their tally. This last half an hour or so, it's going to feel like an age. Luxembourg. Kirby's corner, header from Bright. Breaks to Williamson. Here's Stokes. Now Bright. Daly. Plenty forward, waiting for the cross. There's the diagonal. Goalkeeper. Half came forward. Williamson. Nice turn, creates some space. Almost broke to England. Daly. Quickly closed down. Daly wriggles out of the problem, but Bright wasn't there. And Dos Santos can carry it forward. Nowhere to go. And I think they're tracking back to keep England on the front foot. Oh, but what a great intensity again from Beth England to recover into good positions for her team. Sloppy from England, though. Over Moy out to Stokes. Mead. That should be a goal kick. But there's no doubt Serena Vickner said that she was going to try and play her strongest side. And people were asking her whether she might give a David to Katie Zellum or give Ebony Salmon a chance. But it's clear she's treating these games to find out who her strongest team is. Look, I think England were excellent first 45 minutes. I think it's been disjointed the second half, mainly because Luxembourg have narrowed off and made it harder for England to attack in the same way. So England have to solve problems differently. They've done it through changes and they've done it by going a little wider at times. I have to keep throwing the caveat in. Of course, England are winning this game 6-0, which is a hefty scoreline in itself. But the expectations are high. They're to win the Euros next summer, so you have to look at it through those lenses. What a free kick here, a chance to add to the scoreline. Kirby, plenty to aim for at the back post. Kirby, bring it in. Williamson on the turn. Here's Bright, fires it a goal. And the robust challenge. <laughs> the side of a yellow card for Beth Mead, can't believe it. The first yellow card of the game. I don't really know what to say about that, because... I can't believe it was a yellow card. <laughs> She's had such a great start to the season. Strong challenge. I think she really recovered from the disappointments of last season for her. Really bright, bright start. You think it's a challenging time seeing the Lancer Nikita Paris come in, Toby Heath? coming to the club, not being in the Olympic squad, and she's risen to the challenge in the first Do you know what? She's a great finisher. It's not just her movement. I think in the right position, she can put the ball away. England linking up well here, Kirby, to England. 
Daly, not quite. Another foot in from De Santos. His passing combination is Millie Bright to a player. Well, there's Bright to England, pulls it back, has cleverly done, but he couldn't quite get on the end of it. The two bets com almost combining again. Here's Kirby, now Daly. Lemos, which is a tough cookie, full back position. I think England really struggled once they've got into the final third to break Luxembourg down in the same way they did the first half. And I think that's because the same space isn't there for the likes of Kirby and Toon. Toon for England. Interestingly, Ella Toon staying on the pitch against all Macedonia for the whole game. Same here. We will see a lot of Ella too. 26 on target. And the pass again. Plenty of bodies back. But that's the sort of pass I'm referring to for Ella too. When she gets the ball a little bit high up, less space. That final. That final decision, that final pass, I don't think has been at her best level. That's what she has to work on, because she's certainly capable. So again, we're just a brief little test here. It's fair to say a better second half from Luxembourg. We're not quite in that zone where teams start to drop off. So their fitness closing in on that quickly. Williamson, Kirby, linking up with Toon. On twos, Stokes. Wanted that ball in earlier. Moy, Williamson. Challenges. We better move the ball quickly because you can see how late some of the challenges are. But Williamson been faultless in her performance. She really has. She's excelled in that midfield position. Paris. Daly. Goes the cross. How will they deal with this one? England. On target that time. That's the type of service that Beth England thrives on. Especially when teams get low like that. Again, positioned perfectly. There's no suggestion. Serena Vickman's going to play it. That's a big few caps. And sense a celebration next to me as Frank Kirby leaves the field. Never. <laughs> I'm delighted Stanway. for Georgia Stanway for her to come into the game. Again, valuable minutes for both. Kirby and Stanway. Well, not too many minutes. No. <laughs> well, Georgia Stanway started the game against North Macedonia. That dual 10 roll next to Ella 2, who looks like she's going to complete another full match here for England. Stokes. Bright. Paris drop of the shoulder. There's another challenge in there, though. They haven't actually created too many chances in the last 10, 15 minutes. No, that's why I'm surprised Luxembourg didn't start like this. 
as I mentioned to you at half time, I suspected they would go lower and they would go with more bodies in the central area, which they've done. Here's Bright. Daly. Paris. Edge of the box. Bright. Plenty of power. If that had been on target, people would have been in trouble there. You could tell the way Millie was shaping up. It was a good first touch. She was always going to go for that. And I see her do this on a regular basis in training. She's capable from these areas. I think her passing has been excellent tonight. It's great to Mead on that far side. Well played, Beth Mead. No right to win that, but she has. The covering challenge, though. Luxembourg side should be pleased this period of the game, how well they've defended. Keep coming. Paris. Daly sends it in towards England. Might break to Mead. Williamson. Stokes. Two and able to turn. And again, sort of pop shot at the edge of the penalty area, really. And England, at the moment, just being forced to work a little bit harder. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, everything's long-range shooting from here on in. Again, need taking up good position. But England can no longer work the ball into the penalty box. It's either crosses, shots from distance. And I think for Serena, she'll want to see something else from her team. I'm, I'm certain that her and her coaches will go away and analyse this part of the game of how to break down low blocks. Absolutely. So we we'll to the game on Friday, actually, where England was struggling to break them down in the first half and found it a lot easier in the second. But my boy, it's too much on that. It's all the way through. It's not the only thing. Emma, I could really ask you at the moment is to go back to talk about Frank Kirby because is this what you want to see England do with her in the position she is on the pitch and then ideally playing about 60 minutes of the game? Not I'm English, I wanted to play for England. I think it, England have a better chance of winning with Frank Kirby available for selection. This is a talented England team that can compete to win the European Championship with the right management next summer. And looking at what I've seen tonight after the first 45 minutes, I think England have a lot to be encouraged and excited about, both with Fran and with the other quality that they've got. Here's Daly. Past one challenge. The chance for Daly. Probing. Disappointed here from Luxembourg, though. Not flying out of defence. Position and just sitting back. So it's going to break us down. I mean, we have to be honest here. Luxembourg have not touched the ball in England's box the entire game, 74 minutes. This isn't an opponent that can challenge England, but you, you start to build pictures and patterns in your attacking play. But England's transition to defend will require a lot of work if they commit the number of bodies they're going forward. Laid off nicely by England. Stokes, Moy, floats it in, there's nobody on the end of that though. Uber Moy, thought about the shot there, here's Daly. Daly towards goal, and well held by young goalkeeper. Actually, that's actually been tested that much in the second half. Well, not in the same way, which had to deal with some longer-range efforts. I think this is where I'd really like England to remain patient. Instead of feeling like the shot is on, keep working the back four. Handball, perhaps, 
That's why Stanway, the way the boots packed away. It's Daly. Paris, just a spinner marker. It's not too much joy down that side. Daly once more. And Moy with so much time. Williamson. Bright to Daly. Given a lot of time in that sort of part of the pitch, but all movement ahead of her, Bubba Moy felt she was caught, and eventually the free kick comes. What I have seen stop for England is the movement. There's been few double movements, there's been few selfless runs to just create and open up space for others. And I think at 6-0, it's difficult to keep doing that. Laura Miller to the team. First of their players to be booked. Which is a minor achievement actually. So they had six booked in the game against Northern Ireland. All before this time. Lemus <laughs> Crespo comes off. This late stage in the game, we've got about 30 minutes left, and we know in these scenarios you can get a glut of goals late on in a game. As Martin Schoen comes on, and another pair of fresh legs. Now then, with the goal, we'll clip it up, penalty area, and a header, and the first England goal for Millie Bright. Well, she'll certainly enjoy that one. A popular goal in the England team. And finally, England centre back on a 40th cap, five minutes. Well, it's certainly a decent head up from Millie Bright until I see it again. Lovely dink ball from Beth Mead. It's a decent header from Millie know how good she is in the air, she's capable, gets across the front of her defender, puts it on target, she'll be over the moon to get her first goal. You said it about the set halves in this game, they've, they've had a fair few chances to score. Well, I think both Alex and Millie have kept the ball very well for the team. They've not rushed play, they've kept it simple. Stokes drives to the byline. The players waiting for another cross to come in. Lead. Tune. Bright. You see the lack of movement from England. Even though they're circulating the ball, look how everybody's coming towards the ball. There's no movement to drag players out. There's no movement to get beyond in any way. I think that's something England need to keep doing. Williamson playing inside. It's a miscue. Might still run for England. Why do you think that is, though? Why are they not making those runs? Because there's no pressure. So it's, it's easy, too easy for them. I think Williamson, probably one of the only players... I think has managed to get on the ball behind one of their lines time and time again. Paris. Challenge diving in there from behind. She just about got away from that one. Mead inside one. Looks for Paris, must be a penalty. Not according to the referee though. Paris screaming towards the official. Alexander Chessin. Instead, signals for the substitution. I thought she was signalling for VAR. <laughs> There's no VAR tonight. Well, Jill Scott, MBE, the English game, replacing the future of the English game. Nella 2 doesn't see out the full 90. Along comes Jill Scott. I mean, the sort of type of player that England don't really have a replacement for, essentially. You know what? She's been a brilliant player for club and country. 
Nella to another valuable 80 minutes. I'm sure she will feature regularly for England. Bird trying to pass their way out. Struggling that part of the game, understandably. Here's Daly to the last 10 minutes. England with seven. To you based on the team that England put out today, what are you looking for to add to that team? Who should come in? I just think, from a coach's perspective, she'll want to keep looking, she'll want to see them play against better opposition, she'll want to see more of them performing well for their clubs as well as what they do in the next England camp. I think knowing what her team will be will take some time, probably not until about international camp next March, something like that. I think it takes six seven months for her to get an idea of the players what what i know is that england have depth depth they've got strength all over the pitch i just think i'd like to see them tested against better opposition to see what they need to do better defensively those stern tests come in the competition new competition in february at the moment spain and germany the opponents but there'll be another side added to that but that's why you need diversity. You know, today she plays with a single pivot of Williamson. As I've mentioned before, there's Jill Scott, there's Kira Walsh, there's other players that can come into the team. Let's not forget him, Jordan Nobbs, who's at home. Absolutely. It's not been very injured in pre season. I think it's Chelsea, actually. So Jordan is a, is a brilliant player for club and country. Good ball in towards England. Jimmy Robson, long time serving in the England team, was in the England side that lost to Sri Lanka's Netherlands in 2017, that semi final. England three straight tournament semi finals. To remember, is huge progress in itself, but they want more. But what I'm seeing is the WSL really develop players, as I've said before. You know, having players, even like Katie Zellum, getting opportunities week in, week out for Manchester United is only going to make England stronger. Paris. Stokes. And it goes to Paris. Bright. Scott, Williamson, Paris. And looking for the eighth. She's a little bit frustrated at the moment, Serena Vigman. Well, especially after the first half, but. That's what you want. You want the opponent to pose a different tactical problem. And Luxembourg have done that. It was all too easy for England in the first half. Stanway with a corner. One off matching their tally from Friday. Stanway, decent delivery again. Another header on goal. Another header off target, though. It's not quite happening. I definitely think they've been successful from set pieces, especially corners from this side of the pitch. That outswinging ball has resulted in two goals, but numerous chances. Not score anymore. Oh my boy, 
the move going. Back to Paris. Still Paris goes on and back inside. Must be a free kick down. The goal line there, but not to be. There's no point sort of arguing over these sort of free kicks in this sort of situation though. remembered ten years ago the Netherlands were not amongst the top echelons of world football. England helped take them there. England looking for the eighth. Drop to an England shirt though. For Moy. We have to give some credit to Lutzelberg here. Not tied too much thought they might, but England's tempo has also dropped as well. Joe Scott looking for Paris. Stanway to have a go, Stanway! So close to just dipping under the crossbar. And that's what she does so well from that range. Confidence, her ability. But I think England have struggled a little second half with how to get behind Luxembourg and some of that is because the space is not there. Marcus Ebreu on this bunch of teenagers Luxembourg having their squad. He's finally taken off Kelly Mendes. But it's been that sort of game really. I barely mentioned some of Luxembourg players' names simply for the fact they spent most of the time. And pass the ball. They haven't entered England's final uh, defensive third. I can't think of Mary Earps touching the ball other than maybe the beginning of the game. Bright pinning that out to that side. That's a lovely touch from Mead. Stepping away from challenges and going on, looking for goals. Williamson, but amongst all of this, has had that calm authority about her game again. Stanway, England, Paris. Fizzed at the midriff of the Luxembourg defender, they conceded a penalty against Northern Ireland. Some sort of circumstances, it's the same player as well. She might be winded by that. So four added minutes. So I have to ask you, Emma, seven enough? I mean, they're not playing much of an opponent, Stanway. Towards the back post, Bright keeps it in play, but the Moy could direct it towards goal. Stanway drifts past the challenges, neatly done, another corner. But I think it's better to talk about the good performances they've been and the progression from the last game to now, because that's the because that's the most important thing. Sent it by Mead. Oh, that's a brilliant ball in. And after scoring her first goal for a country, she gets two. Millie Bright at the double. And England have eight again. Well, no surprise to me. Millie Bright is unbelievable in the air. And let me tell you, I work with her every day. She is an unbelievable player to work with. Her dedication, her commitment on the training pitch to get better, to improve especially in the air, which is rewarded for that hard work. So just like they did against North Macedonia, England adding the eighth in added time. It's been a night for the centre-backs. Two goals for Greenwood, two for Bright. England looking for nine, and they're flooding forward, and Beth England was there for the fallback. Really frustrated was Mead. A good introduction to the game for both Beth Mead. I really thought she was going to cut it back for Beth England. It's got a stunning goal against Chelsea. Sorry, I had to mention it. Yeah, she was brilliant. She had a brilliant game against us, and I'm happy for her that she's getting back to her best levels. I'm sure you're happy for Millie Bright as well. Two goals, her first two England goals. Here's Scott.
Millie Bright. Stanway. Hands it to the back post. Will there be another? There is another. And England get nine. And hugs all round. There won't be a more popular goal scorer in the England team this week than Rachel Daly. Do you know what? That's a tough goal. I feel emotional for her, to be honest. What a tough week. Really handled herself with such class. I'm sure her dad will be proud of her. And she points towards the sky. An emotional week for Rachel Daly. But she ends it with a goal for her country. And well deserved. Yeah, solid performance from Rach tonight. Good. Back post ball, last five minutes, England produced some of their best form in the second half and the scoreline, I think, better reflects the game. So, that was Salvo, eight goals for England. They've just about got enough time here to get to double figures. Bright. Harris with loads of space. Oh, and almost brought down. Must pick out an English shot in the middle. She does. And England have 10. And Beth England off the bench again to add that 10th goal. The late goals coming for the Lionesses. I'll have you give Beth that type of service like Nikita does. She will finish. So happy for Beth. Good play from Nikita, she nearly had her legs hacked off inside the penalty box. It's a lovely ball, brave from Beth. And the last action of the game. Well, England, the flurry of late goals, have made the scoreline look pretty dominant in the end. I won't go through all the goal scorers because there were plenty of them, but a couple for both of the centre-backs.